Hello everyone, Rabbi Abe here. In the beginning of the book of Exodus, it says that Moses' mother hid him in an ark and placed him on the Nile River for three months he was concealed. What does that mean? The Zohar explains that these three months were the month of Cancer, the month of Leo, and the month of Capricorn. We are now in the month of Cancer. Shortly we'll be going into the month of Leo. These three months are challenging months. They are in concealment, and so it's more difficult for us to feel the light and blessings of the Creator's light. If you need assistance navigating these three months, if you're feeling challenged, let me know. Go to RabbiAbe.com, schedule a free 30-minute consultation with me, and I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you may have and help you with the challenges that you may be facing. Be blessed, all the best, and enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome. Rabbi Abe here from RabbiAbe.com. Okay, as promised, this video is going to be about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We spoke about the tree of life. We gave a little bit of an overview, a uh, brief understanding uh, a couple of videos ago. You can check that out, tree of life. But what are the effects of being connected with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What I mean, what does it even mean, first of all? And what are the effects? I can tell you right now the effects aren't necessarily good. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil, I can tell you now, causes havoc, chaos, confusion in our life. We want to know how to remove that, okay? So listen to the end of the video. I'll give you some tools Main thing is first we have to have an understanding. Before we get into it, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed on YouTube because this helps to get the video out to more people. Okay, why are we here? Why are we here? Uh, I mean, that's a question, right? Why are we here? And just a brief summary of the Tree of Life. When we spoke about the Tree of Life, we talked about a level of consciousness which has endless fulfillment. Now, in essence, that's how this universe was created. The universe was created with an endless, infinite source of fulfillment. Now, again, you know, how, how do we know that that's true? Well, Think about it. Every form of fulfillment, whatever it is, if you have fun doing something, I don't care what it is, you enjoy, your, you enjoy going out for coffee, let's say, okay, and it's fun for you because there's good conversation, because there's good company, because, because uh, they have amazing coffee, because, uh, you know, again, whatever the reasons are for you. So you have a certain level of fun. Now ask yourself a question. Is it possible that another person can have two times as much fun? Is it possible that someone else can have five times as much fun? Is it possible that someone else can have 20 times more fun? In other words, what's the limitation? You know, how much fun can a person have? How much... Uh, can a person enjoy a relationship? Does it have a specific amount? Like, is there a number? The answer is no. Absolutely not. The amount of fulfillment that a person will get somehow relates to the person themselves, not to how much fulfillment there is available. In other words, the secret here is fulfillment itself the stuff, whatever it is, if fulfillment for you is pleasure, if it's fun, if it's security, if it's peace of mind, if it's freedom, whatever. We all have different fulfillments. If it's enjoying yourself, doing whatever, makes no difference what it is. It's all part of the force that we call the light of the creator. That's what the Kabbalists call it. 
There's no limitation on how much you can receive, except to the degree of your limitation. Your limitation sets the boundaries. Very important to realize that. It is our limitation according to what we call the limitation or the size of our vessel that limits the degree of fulfillment that we will receive from any given fulfillment. Okay, so if we understand that as a principle, the fulfillment is endless. How much we receive and as individuals is according to the size of our capacity to receive that fulfillment. Okay, well, let's understand that, number one, as a principle. Fulfillment is endless, and that endless fulfillment is called the tree of life. Tree of life means only good, means endless fulfillment. It means no, there's no lack whatsoever. Okay? No lack whatsoever. Now, obviously, we have lack in our life. Where does lack in our life come from? Okay, now, it's important we understand the root level of consciousness. So this is a consciousness discussion, and we're discussing the seed level of our consciousness, how it's actually functioning, because when we say consciousness is everything, that's how my teacher used to say, consciousness is everything, but we have to understand that this is the mechanism that taps into energy. It's not physical. We do physical things to tap into energies which are non-physical. Remember that. So I want to refer us, I want to read a little bit from the text of uh, Rabbi Isaac Luria, who was the greatest Kabbalist of the 15th century. And he explained a principle. Some of this I've read before in previous videos, but I'm going to focus in on a couple of different ideas, a couple of different points. So he says, what was the sin of Adam? Okay, we're going back to this idea of the sin of Adam. Why? Because the sin of Adam was, Ki avon, Adam rishon what was it? What was the sin of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Now remember, the Bible is a code. The Bible tells us a nice story of a tree in, in the middle of the garden, in the midst of the garden, a tree of life, and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Adam and Eve should only eat from the tree in the middle of the garden, meaning the tree of life, and not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we understand the story that they didn't do that. They ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right. What was this sin? So Rabbi Isaac Luria says something, again, incredibly curious. He says, what was the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Shelo bachal itasek that Adam did not choose to be involved. You have to listen, listen to the words are not by coincidence. To be involved with the tree of life. He didn't want to be involved with the tree of life. What does that mean? What do you mean involved? Is it about eating from a fruit or something? Obviously not. That's ridiculous. It's not about a fruit. In fact, the Zohar says the fruit was grapes. I don't know where the idea of an apple came from. Maybe it's because they call this an Adam's apple, maybe. I don't know. But the Zohar says grapes, and grapes is a code for what we call the level of chokhmah, which is consciousness. So the sin of Adam was a consciousness, a, pro a problem or a mistake in choice of consciousness. Okay, you, you with me? What was the sin? The sin of Adam was a choice of consciousness. What was the choice? The choice was between the, tr the tree of life, one consciousness, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, a different consciousness. What's the difference? Okay, 
Adam and Eve, chose the consciousness of tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they did not choose, he says, Chochmata Kabbalah. They didn't choose Kabbalah, the, the wisdom of the Kabbalah. Now what does the wisdom of the Kabbalah have to do with anything? Did Adam have a book of Kabbalah? Well, in fact, uh, he did, but that's not what this idea is trying to relate to us. Because of what Kabbalah explains is all of the secrets of how to tap into the tree of life and to disconnect from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Or at least how to correct that and elevate our consciousness to a higher place. What, what does that do? Accomplish it. What does that do? It makes us all wiser. Mm, yeah, no, but it connects us to a realm without chaos. It connects us to a realm without disease. It connects us to a realm where there's peace, harmony, love, goodwill with, with all of us together. All the cures. Uh, you know, that's what the tree of life is about. No chaos, no confusion. Well, what is the origin of confusion? Well, the origin of confusion, which is the seed of chaos, by the way, is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, we discussed the tree of life as having ten sefirot. Remember the tree of life? The tree is ten sefirot. But what is the tree of knowledge of good and evil? How does it look? What does it look like? Well, the answer may surprise some of us. It looks identical to the tree of life. Yes, ten dimensions, ten levels of energy. But what's the difference? The difference is it comes from what the Kabbalists called Ma'arechet HaTum'ah. Ma'arechet HaTum'ah. The impure system. What is the meaning of impure system? What, then there must be a pure system. If there's an impure system, there must then be a pure system, right? By definition. And there is. The pure system leads us to what? The tree of life. Pure system leads us and connects us and helps us tap in to the tree of life. Impure system connects us to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, what is the difference? And how do we get on, you know, get off one train and get on to the other train? Well, there's many angles to get into over here, okay? I can only, uh, obviously with limited time, we can only get into a couple of ideas. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil is represented by the physical world. Physical world. Well, why is that? Because the physical world conceals the spiritual world. What does that mean? Well, the spiritual world is, is non-physical, metaphysical. Uh, the spiritual world has no time. And if the spiritual world has no time, then there's also no change, because time indicates change and movement. No time, no space, no motion. So according to the Kabbalists, the spiritual world is only good. It can only be good because it is an emanation of light, and light doesn't move. Even though I, I know you want to tell me that science says that light travels 186,000 miles per second, according to Kabbalah, it is not so. It is the revelation of light that travels, which means the revelation, the vessel that reveals light, not the light itself. Light is everywhere, all the time, infinite and endless. But, you know, it's, a, it's almost like saying the projector, the image of the projector never moves. But the screen can move. The screen moves. And the screen can move very fast. That's why electrons in an atom move. But the protons don't move. The proton of forces, the force of sharing doesn't move. But the electrons do move. Very much so. In fact, the only reason why we see a physical world, 
a world of concealment is because of the movement of the electron. That will be a different discussion. But remember, Einstein said that theoretically we should be able to walk through a wall. Why can't we walk through the wall? Because the consciousness of humankind holds the desires of humanity don't understand and we don't believe that we can walk through a wall. The electrons moving very fast make it appear as a solid, but actually every atom is 99.99999 empty space. Did I lose you? <coughs> I hope not. Okay, because again, scientific fact, 99.99999 empty space. It's only the nucleus, the neutron, the force over there, which is the mass of the atom. But if you imagine the rotor blade, you know, or bicycle spokes of a wheel, they are mostly empty space. But if it's spinning, you're not going to put your finger. It appears to be a solid. That's the movement of the electron. Electrons move very fast. But if you're a karate master, with your consciousness, with your mind, with your belief, with your training, with your consciousness, you can slightly slow down the movement of that electron. And then what can you do? The answer is you can break six bricks of ice, even if you're a small person, male or female, right? Bricks, ice, wood. I mean, how do they do that? Simple. Consciousness, consciousness controls matter. But we don't believe so. We believe more in the matter, in the physicality of things. That physicality controls our life. And guess what? That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the evil or the negative part. Why? Because the tree of good means it's, it's split into two parts, meaning that we have an opportunity to choose. You see, in any given situation, we're given a choice. When we have to make decisions, let's say, right? We're given a choice between good and evil. Again, what does that mean? Taking it out of the framework, it's not a moral, moral choice. It's not a uh, religious choice. It's a choice between the understanding about what's happening right now has an energetic source. There's an internal structure to it, which is the spiritual force, which means it relates to understanding, it relates to consciousness, it relates to the reasons of why I'm here, why I need to may do certain things, why I need to respond in a certain way to a situation. So according to how I respond determines what I connect to. Do I connect to the, tree, the, the good part of the tree of life or the negative part? Do I connect to the purely physical? You know, someone upsets me. And if I think that's all that's happening right now is there's this person, he's causing me to get angry or she, and now I have a problem. I'm upset. I'm angry. What is that? That's connecting to the tree of knowledge of evil. I'm falling into the trap by falling in to the false belief that this is at this is the, the source. This is the source right now. This person, what they said, what they did, we follow. Again, if, if a person, you know, whatever, we get a cold, a headache, we believe we get the headache. Now this pain, now I have pain. Now I have to get rid of the pain. So I run to the, uh, whatever, Advil, Tylenol. But it, that's all about physical. Is there a reason? In other words, do we, how do we see things? Do we see things only from the external perspective? The 1% physical perspective? Again, the tree of knowledge of good and evil represents the physical world. So everything that happens to us on the physical realm is telling us two things. You have an opportunity to connect to this how? 
It's tree of knowledge until I take it into the tree of no uh, 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 life realm by connecting to the good part. In other words, the good half, because it's always half. You know, like the glass, half empty, half full. I see it half empty. I can, I'm connecting with the physical world, and I think the physical world is the source of what's happening. That's a problem. Why? Because everything in the physical world is limited. It's, it's a limitation. You cause for yourself limitation. You want to connect to, you want to remove the limitations? Is that what we really want to do? Then we have to stop thinking that what's happening or what we think is happening is the only thing happening. There's always the internal, what's beyond the physical. In other words, you know, when we say, well, I'm sure there's a reason for this. Not I'm sure. I am sure. Of course there's a reason. For, or this not, should not be, would not be happening to me. Why I was, went through what I went through when I was a child. Are you stuck with the physical? Are you stuck blaming your parents? You're stuck. You are stuck. It's difficult. I'm not saying this is easy, but there is an internal explanation and a reason that has to do with your reason for being born into that family or to those parents who, who abused you or those siblings who uh, didn't care about you or, or, or abandoned you or, you know, whatever. Whatever we go through. There's an internal reason why you got that speeding ticket. It's not because you were speeding. Yeah, you were speeding. Well, why were you speeding at that particular moment, at that particular place, and the cop happened to be sitting and waiting just for you at that moment because you were speeding many times before and you never got a ticket? Again, if we look at the physical as a source, we connect to limitations of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it creates limitations in our life. Limitations in our life look like what? Many things, well, none of them really positive. It doesn't lead to, lead to anything continuous. If you recall, we said the tree of life has continuity. Uh, we'll get back into that. That's another video, okay? We didn't get to the full explanation. But why the tree of knowledge has no continuation? It's limited. And why the tree of life has endless endless fruit you know it's like the seed of an apple the seed of an apple how however many seeds it contains you can effectively over a period of time have endless apples even just from one apple that's what it means probably why maybe we shouldn't eat seedless fruits i don't know maybe so the point here is and i don't want to make the video too long so what does he say over here? Another page, in page 13 of the, uh, the, the writings of the Tree of Life, Rabbi Isaac Luria says, he says, he's continuing a discussion, he says, not only that, What? He says, the entire purpose of why we are all, I know, we're all searching. Why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? He's giving us already the general answer for all of us, why we're all here. You know what he says? We are all here to learn Kabbalah. We're all here to learn Kabbalah? You mean we all have to sit and study Kabbalah? No. No. What does it mean? We need to learn that this world and our life is not about the external. The external is only the covering. In the same way, our physical body is only a covering of our soul, of our consciousness. But this is not who we are. We are not our body. We are our soul. Who do you talk to after the first five minutes? Are you talking to the person's body? 
Or I say, I'm talking to you. Are you there? What do you mean, I'm talking to you? Who are you? Are you your body? Of course not. The body is called the clothing of the soul. So that's what we're discussing. We've all come here in a very general way. Of course, each one of us specifically in different ways, of course. That's why we need to learn specifically what is our tikkun, what is our correction or karmic correction, what are we here to do specifically. But it's all about one thing. It's all about learning how to connect beyond the physical limitation of what is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But that's why at the same time, every situation which may look bad also must have a good side. How do you begin to tap into the good of the seemingly negative situation? First step, knowing for sure, with certainty. Wait a second. There's an internal part to this. There's a reason why this is happening truly, with certainty. And I would like to know or learn and open myself up to the internal reason as to why I'm going through this now. What is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to learn? How do I benefit from this? Because there's always the internal. Never goes anywhere. In fact, there's more internal than there is external. But again, we get trapped in the external. So don't get trapped in the external. If we want to get, hop on to the tree of life, we have to connect to the good of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And again, what does that look like? Removing the limitations, that's the first benefit, and connecting to the internal. Even if I don't know what it is, acknowledgement in a consciousness level that there is an internal, and I want to connect to the internal of what's going on right now. That is the first step on getting off the, the, the train of limitation, the place of limitation, again, to get off the tree of knowledge of good and evil and to get on to the tree of life. Be blessed, everyone. Remember, please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you very soon on the next video. All the best.